Welcome to Write Your Book in a Flash with Dan Janelle, the only podcast where you'll learn how successful people just like you have grown their businesses, expanded their influence, and made more money by writing a book. On each episode, you'll learn the inside secrets to help you create a book that can serve as a powerful marketing tool to skyrocket your business. I'm your host, Dan Janelle. I help thought leaders, business executives, and entrepreneurs write their books. To find out more, go to writeyourbookinaflash.com. Now, let's welcome today's guest, Christine Monahan. How are you today? I'm good, Dan. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, my pleasure. Why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Okay. Well, you and I obviously met through my recent collective group, which is an online uh, group for entrepreneurs in the U.S. and Canada. I am uh, a reset coaching consultant, and I work primarily in the areas of revenue generation and mindset growth and goal setting to goal achieving. I work with entrepreneurs one-on-one, and I also work with um, leaders and teams of leaders in those areas. Fantastic. And you wrote a book. Tell us about that book and how it came to be. Mm -hmm. So the first book I wrote was uh, Heartbroke. And I wrote it about, um, gosh, it must be about 15 years ago. And it was um, really a cathartic uh, way of me dealing with a near-death experience that I had at that point in time. And um, I I basically um, had a near-death experience on the same day that I got a million-dollar investor for my then company. And subsequently, I decided to walk away from the million dollars, close the company, and utilize um, what had taken place to really figure out what the bigger thing at play was um, in why I had the near-death experience um, and how I was going to make that into something that was going to build my life into a new level of success and enjoyment. So throughout the first two or three months, I was obviously trying to navigate the psychological um, emotions associated with the near-death experience and I decided well you know what I'm just gonna write a book about my experiences I go along over the first year and so I really journaled and then I, I decided after about six months I'm gonna write a book and I kind of gave myself a challenge which I think I needed at that point um, or I'll, I always need a challenge but <laughs> I really needed a challenge and I basically said You've got six months months to write the book. If it gets written, great. If it doesn't, at the end of six months, it goes into the garbage. So by the end of six months, I had a book, and I found myself an editor. I found myself someone who could uh, obviously do the graphics and the layout and all that stuff, and away I went. So um, that's how the book came to be. And you know what? It's not a perfect book. It's not... Um, you know, it's not beautifully written necessarily, uh, but it speaks to utilizing uncertainty and challenge and creating fresh opportunities. And I think that's really the impact of it. it very interesting. So it's a memoir, and you're our first memoir writer on the series of nearly 100 podcasts. So this is a totally different take on things. Um, and I think it's interesting that the memoir, a lot of people get confused with a memoir. They think a memoir is a biography that starts from you know, like the time they were born until the present. And they're really not. A memoir is a slice of life in time. And yours was the, was the near-death experience, uh, which is interesting. So you, you segmented that very nicely. So how do you translate a memoir so that it is a story that other people can relate to and learn from as opposed to just being my journal? Right. Uh, Great question. So in the work I do as a consultant and a coach, um, I primarily help individuals and teams to reset and get them from where they are to where they want to be. The relevance of of that first book I wrote was that I had to get from where I was to where I next wanted to be. And I had somewhat of a clean canvas, um, which... You know, a lot of people like wish for a clean canvas. Oh, if I only had a clean canvas in my life. But the thing is, is when you've got a clean blank canvas, that can be very overwhelming. And so the idea was really to utilize a set of really unfortunate circumstances and scenarios and utilize them to create the next best thing in my life. 
So I wasn't going to be defined by it. It was going to be a part of my story, but it wasn't going to become my story. And so I think that it's very useful and inspiring in terms of we all go through phases where we have small and big hiccups. I mean, the world itself is going through a big hiccup right now on a whole bunch of different levels. And you have two choices. You can surrender into it and let it swallow you up. Or you can go, okay, this is what is happening. And I'm going to utilize this to actually move me forward and my business forward and my family forward in the highest good of all. And so that, that, th those are really the two choices any of us have on any given day. Mm -hmm. So do you consider your, how has your book helped you in your business? Well, it obviously, when I started my coaching and consulting business, which was probably about a year, year and a half after um, my near, near death experience, um, I already had a business that was my own, but I, I recreated it or, you know, reinvented it, let's just say. Um, it, it's a great, it's a great credibility piece. I mean, people are always, I think, wowed by the fact that someone actually had the uh, discipline to write a book. Um, it doesn't even need to be perfect. I, I always say, you know, it's not about perfection. It's about making the commitment and then fulfilling it. Um, and I've gone on to co-author two more books and actually write, um, write a, ser a, th a series of three handbooks, uh, which I which uh, went out last year. So I love the writing process, and I think it um, allows me to provide content that clients can utilize to integrate uh, the teachings and the learnings that they gain from me through the programs that I offer. Okay. Um, you talked about reverse engineering when you wrote the book. What did you mean by that? Yeah, so when I started my career back in my early 20s, um, I was raising money in the area of sponsorship for world-class events such as the Formula One car races, the hydroplane races, openings of airports, openings of uh, large public libraries, etc., and then national marketing campaigns for national and international companies. So um, that included like 80,000 person events over three days. So in order to actually get to the deadline per se of any of those, which, you know, there's no moving a deadline on, an, on a hydroplane race mm -hmm. or or a uh, Formula One car race, you can't go, oh, we're not ready, we're just going to delay it for another week. You have to literally learn how to take the goal from that date and reverse engineer it all the way back to, and here's what we're going to do this quarter, and here's what we're going to do this month, and so that means this is what I need to focus on this week. And so a lot of the work that I now do with companies and teams is really teaching them a very simple formula to reverse engineer from where they want to be all the way back to, and this is what we're going to do this quarter, this is what we're going to do this month, and here's what I'm going to focus on or we're going to focus on this week. And it makes the impossible into a manageable piece, which then over time cumulatively, cumulatively creates that end goal. So when it came to writing the book, how would you process that from the reverse engineering point of view? So, yeah, a great question. So because a book obviously comes to life as you're writing it. Uh, what I did is I created what I wanted the total experience at the end to be. It was like, I want the experience to be that people can understand what it's like to take incredible uncertainty and challenges in the form that I were, was experiencing them and turn them into possibilities. So I mapped out roughly what I thought the five or ten chapters would be and then I wrote the last chapter first and I worked it all the way backwards and sometimes I'd write up you know I'd work on chapter 10 and sometimes I'd work on chapter 2 but primarily I was working it backwards from that end chapter hmm. interesting um, tell us about your other books uh, what were they about so I co-authored one um, called Heal, 
which I'm an author of um, through Your Holistic Earth, which is a Canadian association for holistic uh, practitioners. Um, and then I'm actually, um, Mother, m m pardon me, uh, Women's Day, which is March 8th, um, part of a Canadian book called Pursuit 365, um, which has like Jan Arden and Biff Naked and some really high profile Canadian women. And each woman out of the 365 has one day allocated to them. And that book comes out March 8th, which I'm really excited to be a part of. And then I created the Reset um, handbook series uh, last year. And that's all about resetting, you know, resetting from a stresses, uh, normal to stresses optional life approach. Um, the premise of slowing down to move ahead is the second one. And the third one is all about why can't I just focus? And so those um, involve a lot of tools and practices and exercises that leaders can utilize themselves and then pass along to their uh, team members or parents can pass along to their kids, et cetera. Well, what, what tips do you have for writing a book effectively in a, in a very short period of time, six months? I would say you have to create the date that it's going to be done or you're going to throw it away because that really ups your own game and your own commitment. <laughs> um, and, I, you know, most people won't throw it away. But um, just to hold your feet to the fire, I would have a committed amount of time that you write every single week. Um, I think there's a lot of movies and stories out there about the persecuted writer and they get writer's block. And yeah, that, you know, that, that definitely is so, but you know, you have to treat it like a business in its own way. And so you have to create the structure for you to write and maybe one day you don't want to write, but you can still spend the time there writing or looking at the different chapters, there's lots of aspects to the book writing process beyond actually writing. Uh, there's a great book by Julia Cameron called The Artist's Way. And I still go back to this one exercise that she had suggested, which is you write three pages first thing every morning. And it can be, can be complete nonsense. But it's about getting all the fluff and um, static and clutter out in, from internally inside your head out on paper so that you can actually hear what the source intelligence within is trying to tell you and direct you and guide you to do. So that is a fabulous tool if you, if you haven't heard of the artist way already. Um, but I think the greatest thing is just scheduled time and that you stick to it. And if you have to sit there for an hour and do nothing because can't get beyond your writer's block, then I guess that's what you're meant to do in that hour. Mm hmm Okay. Um, what did you learn about the writing process that you wish you had known when you first started? Oh, that I wouldn't have it all figured out. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, you know, as soon as I started writing, I was like, oh my God, well, where's that going to go? And why have I written that? And do I really need to write that? So I had to very quickly um, curb my own monkey mind from deciding what should or shouldn't be written um, and allow it to just kind of flow and really just silence that that monkey mind from saying, oh, that should go in it or that shouldn't go in it. It became very apparent to me very quickly that if it was going to be a decent read, and, you know, I, I'd say it's decent. I wouldn't say it's a Pulitzer Prize, but <laughs> <laughs> that it... Um, that I needed to tell the truth. And I, I I couldn't, if I was going to filter the truth, then it really wasn't going to be worth reading. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I've actually, I was a book coach for one woman who tried to write a memoir, and I might as well have been her psychologist. It was a very difficult process. So that's why I don't do memoirs. Uh, because yeah, well, there, yeah and, and it's interesting that you, um, categorized it as a memoir because um, I never really I don't know if I ever categorized it before but I appreciate that and um, yeah yeah you, you just have to decide you're going to be very truthful with yourself and not filter you know get past the filter cool great well this has been very interesting Christine why don't you tell us who your ideal client is and how they can get in touch with you 
Right. So I would say um, my ideal client, there's two really areas. There's leaders, as in companies who have leaders who want to become better leaders. I always like to say lead as you would like to follow uh, and who are interested in inspiring and tapping into their individual and collective potential with their teams. And then the other, um, I guess, ideal client is um, a entrepreneur who's already succeeding or a leader who's already succeeding. And they're either stuck or they are transitioning from one level to another. And they know roughly where they want to go, but they're just not quite sure how to go about doing it um, or where to start. And um, I'm pretty good at helping them do that as well as um, increase their revenue. Great. And how can they get in touch with you? Best way to do it is christinemonahan.com, uh, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-E, Monahan, M-O-N-A-G-H-A-N.com. And in there, there's lots of, uh, I think on every page, there's um, an opt-in where you can schedule a call for a meeting with me. Fantastic. Thank you for being with us today. Thanks so much, Dan. Thank you for listening to the Write Your Book in a Flash podcast with Dan Janelle, the only podcast that shows you exactly how people just like you have built their businesses by writing a book. If you'd like to write your book but don't know where to start, you can find great information at writeyourbookinaflash.com. If you're ready to take your next step to write the book that can transform your business, I invite you to schedule a free, no obligation consulting call with me by going to writeyourbookinaflash.com. We'll be back next week with another insightful interview to help you become a top business leader.